Hey y'all, welcome to Kamira's Kitchen. I am here with yet another budget Thanksgiving idea. I have some batter fried turkey. Have you ever had that, honey? We have green bean casserole, pigeon pea rice, sweet potato casserole, and some from the scratch peach cobbler. Check out these recipes and lots of holiday recipes in my new ebook, Southern Touch. That is going to be your go-to for all your holiday meals and all of your soul food Sundays from now on, I promise you. Now, I am using three turkey legs today, but I have seen whole turkeys for from 50 cent to $1 a pound. You could just buy a whole turkey, defrost it, and cut it up and fry it just like this, and that would be super cheap. Now, I'm going to season this just like I do my fried chicken. I'm going in with some hot sauce, some chipotle and garlic seasoning. Whatever your favorite poultry seasoning is, you can use that. I'm also going to be adding on some lemon pepper as well as a little bit of MSG, okay? You know it's gonna kick up that flavor, okay? I am going to put some buttermilk on this, but not too much, cause y'all know, look, I ain't trying to spend all that on buttermilk now, okay? It's gonna have to just, you know, marinate in what I'm putting in here. Now, the best thing to do would be to put this in a large Ziploc bag. That way you could even use even less buttermilk, but I ain't had it. I'm gonna let this marinate overnight and then I'm going to let it sit at room temperature for about 30 minutes before frying. I'm gonna season up my self-rising flour with some chicken bouillon, some Creole seasoning, and some garlic powder. You know, we want the flavor all up in the flour, all up in that turkey, okay, we want it to be real good. And then I'm gonna go in and I'm going to coat these with my flour. Now, one thing that I would change about this is that I would actually crack an egg into the buttermilk mixture. I think that would help the coating stick even better. I guess turkey skin a little bit different than chicken skin, okay? So that's the only thing that I would change. Other than that, this came out really perfect. I am going to rub off, you know, the extra bits that are on my fingers and I'm gonna press that in to get some extra crunchy bits on the turkey. I have my oil preheating to about 350 degrees, and I am going to let these cook on a medium temperature, okay? So I got these on about a five or six, and I'm going to cook them for about 20 to 22 minutes. Now these some big jokers, okay? This ain't no 10 minute ordeal, all right? So you're gonna have to let these really cook. I don't turn it until after about five minutes because I really want it to get a nice color on one side, all right? And then you're just gonna let it keep frying. Now, one thing I love about eating some turkey legs is that when you eat it, you know, you holding it by that drumstick, you look like a straight up Viking, you know, eating that big, that big piece of meat. Y'all, I think it is so hilarious and I just love it. And this turkey really comes out super juicy because you let it soak in that buttermilk overnight. Even though I'm showing you guys this recipe first, this would be one of the last things I would make in this meal so that you could eat it nice and hot. I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna put this on a baking sheet so all the oil can just drip down. Let me know if you are open to trying batter fried turkey. I'm gonna show you what it looks like at the end of the video so you can see how juicy it is. For my sweet potato casserole, okay? Now I think this is a little bit like, you know, sweet potato pie in disguise. Okay, so you're kind of getting two for one with this one. You're getting like a sweet potato pie situation, but you're also getting a side, right? So I have three large sweet potatoes, and to that I'm going to add half of a stick of butter, half of a cup of heavy cream, and half of a cup of brown sugar. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of vanilla extract and just a touch of lemon extract, all right? I'm gonna also use some cinnamon, a pinch of nutmeg, and then I am going to start blending this up with my beaters. Now, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Y'all had to switch bowls. These beaters was just flicking sweet potato everywhere. I don't know what was going on. Okay, so I, I switched to a bigger bowl, and then we kept it pumping, all right? So as you beat this, you may see like big strings or like big chunks of sweet potato that don't break down. You can just pick those out because you don't want all them lumps and your sweet potato casserole, okay? Cause y'all know you can cook. All right, so I know y'all looking out for stuff like that. I'm gonna add a pinch of salt and two eggs and I'ma just use my spatula cause honey, them beetles was just, I ain't want raw eggs in my kitchen, okay? And then I am going to start to prepare the little strudel topping. 
For the topping, I'm using a combination of brown sugar, butter, and flour with a pinch of salt. I am gonna mix this together until like a paste starts to form, and then I am going to work in some chopped pecans. Now, I know some of y'all are like, girl, you capping, you did not get uh, pecans in on a budget meal. I am telling you, if you shop at places like Lidl and Aldi, especially with the type of sales they are running right now for the holiday season, I'm telling you, you can get in like a little bit of pecans, okay? But if you don't wanna do it, you know, or you got nut allergies in the house, you can leave it out and you will still have a very good topping or you could even sub like a little bit of oatmeal. That would still be nice, okay? I am gonna go in and I am going to butter my baking dish. Um, now I was able to get butter, I've seen butter for like $2 a pound, okay? So you better go out and grab it and freeze some, all right, if you catch it on the deals, all right? And I am going to add my sweet potato mixture to my baking dish. I'm going to spread it out well, and then I am going to go in with this topping. This strudel topping is one of my favorite parts of the sweet potato casserole. Now this is going to need to bake um, at 375 for about 40 to maybe 45 minutes. I check it at about 35 to make sure the top isn't getting too brown. You should allow it to cool and then you can go in and serve this up. Let me know if you are going to make this sweet potato casserole recipe. I think it is so good. Now y'all, I know in the black community, we don't be taking a liking to green bean casserole. Okay, it's time to break the barriers today, guys. Okay, <laughs> we I am going to show you guys a from the scratch green bean casserole. This isn't no, you know, can everything green bean casserole. You guys are going to love this. I have about a pound and a half of green beans. I'm going to cook them for about seven minutes in some salted water, and then I'm going to drain them and rinse them. I'm going to add butter onions and I'm going to start to saute this until it gets a little, you know, a little caramelization on it. I'm going to season this with some Creole seasoning just to my taste. You guys know you can use this basically like salt. And then I am going to go in with eight ounces of chopped mushrooms. So we are making a homemade cream of mushroom today. Okay. Nobody will complain about this casserole for sure. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt, and then I'm putting in about a tablespoon of my onion and herb seasoning, as well as a little bit of dried thyme. I'm gonna add about three cloves of minced garlic, and I'm gonna saute this for about two more minutes. Adding about two tablespoons, you could do two to three tablespoons of flour, is really what's going to help make that gravy, okay? You wanna to toast this for about a minute because you don't want no raw flour taste in your casserole, okay? And then we are going to start to add in some milk, all right? Um, you, can, you can use milk, you can use half and half, you can use a combination of heavy cream, you can use whatever you like, all right? To give it that rich flavor, you are going to need some chicken bouillon, but I also like to add in a little bit of roasted garlic bouillon. Let this simmer on medium low for about five minutes and you will see that it will thicken up very nicely. If it is not up to your taste, like I felt it like it needed a little bit more seasoning, I went in with a little extra chicken bouillon, creole seasoning, and onion and herb seasoning. If it's too thick, this is the time where you can add in some more milk or a little bit more broth, okay? But I wanted mine a little thick, you know, I didn't have to have mine runny, so it's just up to you, okay? Since my skillet is large, I'm gonna go up there and I'm gonna start tossing my green beans in here, but you can also just mix these in your pan. I'm then going to place this in my baking dish. I'm going to top it with the crispy French onions and I'm gonna bake this at 350 for about 20 to 25 minutes. Remember your green beans are pretty much cooked. You really just wanna watch it and see that your French onions don't get too crispy or too brown. Um, so let me know guys, are we breaking barriers today? Are you guys going to try a green bean casserole? This was so delicious. Everybody loved this. And also let me know in the comments what other recipes you guys would like to see on a Thanksgiving or even just a soul food Sunday menu. So here's what it looked like right out the oven. It's nice, creamy with a delicious coating. 
I really love adding like a seasoned rice to a holiday meal or even just any soul food meal because it really stretches because rice is so inexpensive. Plus I was able to get a pound of sausage for $2.30. I'm also going to add in about a half of a pound of chicken gizzards. Do y'all play with the, the chicken gizzards, okay? I have grinded these up in a food processor and I think they add a nice little richness to your rice dishes. I'm gonna go in with some celery, some bell pepper, and some onion, and I am going to saute this for about three to four minutes. Now this is gonna take on the form of something kind of like a dirty rice. However, I am going to be adding some pigeon peas to this, and that's gonna make it even heartier um, and even more delicious in my opinion. So I'm gonna put in about four cloves of garlic, about a teaspoon of salt-free Cajun seasoning, and a bay leaf. I'm gonna simmer, cook this for about 30 seconds, and then I will go in with one can of drained pigeon peas. You can tend to find this in the Hispanic aisle. This is so good. If you've never tried pigeon peas in your rice, you gotta try it, okay? I absolutely love it. I'm gonna be using a mixture of beef, chicken, and ham bouillon today. I know this looks like a lot of bouillons, but it's gonna add a great flavor to your rice. I'm also gonna put in some garlic powder and a little bit of browning. The browning is optional. Now y'all can see mine look beat up, okay, because I've been using it quite a bit. It just adds a nice color, all right? I'm gonna mix this together and then I'm gonna add in my water. And the water I have is a mixture of the liquid from the pigeon peas plus water, okay? So you don't wanna throw that liquid in the can away. That's flavor, okay? You're gonna be throwing away flavor. You wanna mix this all together and you wanna taste your broth. Taste to see that it's really seasoned. Mine tasted really well seasoned, so I didn't add anything else. And then I went in with a cup and a half of long grain rice. I covered this, I let it come to a boil, then I turned it to the lowest heat setting for 20 minutes, all right? When it is done, you look at all this deliciousness, guys, okay? I let it sit for about three minutes before fluffing it with the heat off. And then I like to go in with some chopsticks and just gently fluff it up because I don't want to break up the rice pieces. Making your own pie crust is so affordable and very delicious. I am going to go in in my food processor with two and a half cups of flour, a tablespoon of sugar, a teaspoon of salt, six tablespoons of cold butter, and two thirds of a cup of shortening. Butter flavored shortening would be even better, and, the, and it's cold. I'm gonna pulse this together until it forms like a wet sand type texture. You'll know it's right when you can open it, you can squeeze it with your hand, and then it will crumble very easily. Into that, I am going to drizzle a half a cup of ice water. Now, I don't mix it until it you know, comes together all the way. I just let it get incorporated and then I go out with some more flour and then I dump out my dough and I just use a little bit of flour and I just sort of help it come together, okay? You don't want all these little crumbly bits in your pie crust. Once you have this formed, you're then going to form it into a ball and you're going to cut it in half press it out, and you are going to let this refrigerate for two hours up to five days. Really, I think that this is one of the things that you should do in advance, okay? I like to do this the night before, so that the next day, the only thing I need to do is roll this out, okay? You don't wanna have to be dealing with everything on Thanksgiving day. Also, if you don't have a food processor, it is very easy for you to just go in and use a pastry cutter or a fork or even your fingers to cut that butter into the flour mixture and you can just work everything together that way. Don't let the equipment be a barrier for you, even though I do think it makes everything easier in the kitchen. Now it is the next day and I am going to roll out the pie crust that I am going to use for the bottom. I am going to put this in the bottom of a 12 inch cast iron skillet. If you have not made peach cobbler or a cobbler or in a cast iron skillet, it is your chance to try it today, okay? One of the reasons for it is that it makes the under crust very delicious. It gives it a really nice crispiness to me. Plus I buttered the bottom of my cast iron skillet, so mm -mm -mm. 
Y'all, let's fight in the comments to increase my engagement. Is this a pie or is this a cobbler? Now, I feel like, look, once I press in the crust into the bottom of the skillet, I cut off that little rim. See, if I left that rim, that would have been a pie, right? But see, since I cut that off, it is now definitely a cobbler, okay? So let me know what you think. <laughs> I am going to go in and I'm going to press some marks in it with a fork and I'm going to bake this at 375 for about 11 minutes and then I am going to get started on this delicious filling. I'm putting in some butter as well as two large cans of drained peaches and then the small can I did not drain it okay. I actually put in the juice from that. And I'm going to add in some vanilla extract, some lemon extract, some cinnamon, and some nutmeg. Now, one of the ways I'm able to put some of the juice in from the peaches is that I am going to combine it with about three tablespoons of cornstarch. I also added in about a cup of brown sugar and just, just a little shot of peach bourbon. Now, if you got it in your house, use it. If you don't got it in your house, don't worry about it. It's still going to be delicious, okay? So this is the cornstarch mixed with a little bit of peach juice. I am going to add this and I'm going to let this simmer for about five to six minutes because you need to get thick and brown like me, baby. Okay, you need it thick like a sis. Okay, okay. And then you're going to just cut off the heat. All right. By that time, your crust, your cast iron skillet crust should be done. And then I'm just going to roll out the other one and I'm going to cut it into one inch strips. Actually, I needed a little bit of what I cut off the edges to help make the top crust. So that's really the reason why I cut that edge off of the side, okay? Then I am going to go in and I'm gonna dump my peach mixture into my cast iron skillet, making sure to get all that juice, baby. Okay, if this don't scream Southern girl, I don't know what this. Okay, peach cobbler, homemade too, amen, all right. I am going to lay down my strips. Now, I know some of y'all like to get fancy with it. You know, you want to do the crisscross applesauce. Baby, I don't do that. I just lay down the bottom, then I lay down the top. And I ain't had nobody complain, okay? I am going to brush this with a little bit of heavy cream to increase the browning. And then I'm going to dust it with some cinnamon sugar. I'm going to bake this at 375 for about 40 to 45 minutes. OK, um, you want to do it until the top is nice and golden and it's bubbly. Allow this to cool all the way. Don't let the greedy goblin get you. OK, you need to let it cool so that that juice can thicken up very nicely. Ooh, baby, this was one of the best peach cobblers I have ever had in my life. Hands down. Check out my ebook to get the exact measurements. And y'all, you're going to love this. OK, now this is the inside of that turkey. Nice and juicy. Guys, you know that I love you. Jesus loves you. God bless you for watching this channel. And I know I'm going to see you next time at Kamara's Kitchen. Goodbye. God bless.